Following more breaking news, this out of East Palestine, Ohio. A live look right now. The National Transportation Safety Board holding its second day of hearings on that toxic train derailment. We brought you some of yesterday's hearing as well. Now, th this is what's happening. The NTSB is releasing some video from that February crash. Um, and I believe you're seeing some of that here. A preliminary NTSB report finding a wheel of the Norfolk Southern train derailed moments before 38 cars derailed and crashed. That's what we're seeing some of this here. Five of the tank cars contain 115,000 gallons of vinyl chloride. It's a highly volatile gas for commercial use. Responders then conducted an hours long controlled release, sending plumes of smoke, potentially contaminants into the air. Thousands of residents were forced to evacuate. With us now, Tammy and Rick Chai. They're residents of East Palestine, Ohio. Thank you both for coming on today. Um, again, your home is, your hometown at least, is in the news cycle. Again, Tammy, what was it like to hear from folks discussing, again, this train derailment uh, in a place you call home? Uh, well, we watched the uh, hearing yesterday and found uh, that it was, I thought some of the testimony was really uh, shocking. Uh, from what I was understanding, that they were really concerned about the polymerization of the tanks, and that's why they did the burn. And from the expert witnesses from OxyVinyls in Texas, and then Dr. Carroll, who has been studying vinyl chloride, he's a chemist for years, they felt there was no polymerization, and they didn't they didn't think that there was a need to blow, but they said, you know, that's up to the decision of the people on the ground. They're making a very difficult decision. But I know that the fire chief didn't get all of their testimony either before he made the final decision. So really tough position to be in. But um, from what I was hearing, it didn't sound like that this should have happened that night or that afternoon. Andy, Rick, before I get your thoughts on this, uh, to Tammy's point, we'll play Norfolk Southern, the representative, what they said about that controlled burn. Here's that moment. Our concern grew quickly because of un an uncontrolled explosion of a tank car would be catastrophic. Explosions involving tank cars carrying monomers or liquefied flammable gases have occurred in the past with devastating consequences. And if polymerization was occurring, rapid action would be necessary to prevent an uncontrolled and potentially deadly explosion. Based on, because of factors that rendered other options too dangerous and potentially ineffective, a controlled vent and burn was determined to be the best and safest action. Rick, do you uh, believe that? Your thoughts? Oh, that's a tough one. I've always concentrated on, and by the way, if anybody wants to know what's going on, uh, please go to my YouTube channel, Chai Pod, T S A I P O D. I've been filming in those creeks since this all began, and our creeks are still heavily contaminated with deadly chemicals. Our mayor, our city council just approved a $25 million project to give us a new park, an amphitheater. Meanwhile, the only person I see cleaning the creeks has what amounts to a $5 piece of PVC pipe that is squirting water into the top layers of the creek bringing up the chemicals and sending them down into neighboring counties, West Virginia, the Ohio River. In my opinion, that's the, the uh, like putting, uh, blowing your leaves into your neighbor's yard, only these are deadly chemicals. So I'm sure that new park is gonna look great on a Norfolk Southern highlight reel, but of that $20 million, $25 million, how many homes would that buy? How many air purification systems? How many home cleanings? But that would put the focus back on the toxicity of this mess instead of a distraction. And if you drank those chemicals in that creek, you would probably go blind. But you know what else makes people blind? $25 million. And lastly, I will say, I cannot prove causation or correlation, but I have a family whose entire family members tested positive for the chemicals inside their body, including benzene, which is one of the most carcinogenic uh, compounds known to man. Three weeks ago, the father felt a lump in his chest. It is now tripled in size. He was just diagnosed with a rare form of male breast cancer. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Norfolk Southern and City Council. 
Um, again, it's sorry to hear, of course, uh, those health updates, tragically so. Newsmax uh, cannot independently confirm uh, those allegations at this point, as you know. There's no allegations. There's, I can't prove causation or correlation. I'm just stating two facts side by side. Okay. Um, Tammy, if we could just end on this note, uh, mm -hmm. tell me about what East Palestine is experiencing right now. Of course, we'd initially heard maybe some residents had left permanently so. Uh, talk to me about what, what it looks like. Uh, there are a lot of homes up for sale. I know a lot of people have gone. Uh, people are desperately trying to leave, but it's you, it's very difficult to pay two mortgages at the same time because you have to wait for a house to sale and you, and you want to get to be somewhere else. There's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of people that are still ill, and the town is heavily divided at this point because Norfolk Southern coming in and doing all this PR work to try to alleviate uh, the problem by throwing fairs and fundraisers and things for causes that aren't related to the derailment. So, or the cleanup. Or the cleanup. So it's, people are having a very difficult time and it's, you know, it's going to be five months now. So um, I just want people out there in the country to know that when something like this happens, it's it's in the best interest of the community to band together and stick together to try to get it, um, to get it resolved, and not to be swayed or influenced by large amounts of money that are coming in. All right. To put a mandate on it. Well, we appreciate the time and again sharing your again personal experience there uh, through through your eyes and your lens. We appreciate that, Tammy and Rick Chai joining us there from East Thank Palestine. You. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. You know, remember during that time how rocked that community was by this train derailment. And they were asking almost immediately for assistance mm -hmm. from the federal government. It took such a long time before anyone uh, from the Biden administration made their way to actually see what was happening. I know there were some local EPA offices that opened up, but Pete Buttigieg, it took time before he made it there. The president still hasn't visited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in East Palestine, uh, obviously, when they were hit by this, uh, it's a small rural town. Um, I remember we, we had the mayor on this broadcast. We had the uh, governor, Mike DeWine of Ohio, on this broadcast. We were asking him, remember, is the drinking water safe? That was one of the big, uh, the big questions there because many thought that it wasn't. Um, as of right now, they have reported uh, months ago that it was safe to drink as well. Uh, but again, it's not over, at least according to the, the Chai family. They, they face their own issues there. So the NTSB is investigating, and they are talking again uh, with Norfolk Southern, or at least asking questions, getting them on the record. Did they need to do this slow burn? Was that the best way to handle it? We've obviously seen the devastating impact it has on the town. I do see the other side of it as well. Do you sit in, obviously, do you, do you sit in the issues at hand and not move on for this? Or do you try to make a town whole again, maybe by adding some of these communal events again, but also allowing the investigation to play out? You can do two things at one time. Um, so as the mayor has his hands full, and you can, you, can, you can empathize with that part about it. You want people to come back to the town. They're obviously moving out. You just heard from the family. If they're moving out, there's no tax revenue. If there's no tax revenue coming in, that's devastating to the town already on top of what they're facing there, too. Um, so either way, just presenting all the facts that you're seeing there as, as we see them. And the NTSB will continue holding their uh, hearings. That is happening live right now.